Hey, it's Adam with Productivity Academy, and today I wanted to share an article uh, as well as some information and then actionable things that I've been doing around this, and it has to do with screen addiction and the overuse of screen, social media, things like that. This is a really big and I think important topic since it's something that I think at this point we can all agree that it can cause issues, but I mean, screen usage, like our phones, our computers, I mean, these are some of the most fantastic things to have come across the, uh, change the world basically right over the last 20, 30, 40 years, however you want to consider it to be important. But there are issues and we're seeing some of those come uh, into, into play now and we still haven't seen the full work through. You know, it's, it's, it hasn't been that long that people have been working online, working totally from their phones. Um, you know, it's not been a thing where somebody's done it literally their entire lives. So I think from that point of view, it's really important that we consider it. And I think a lot of people would agree with me that it affects their productivity and your contentment, right? Just how you feel in life, whether it's feeling overwhelmed, it's FOMO, right? Fear of missing out um, and kind of trying to balance that because things like your phone provide a great source of information. There are so many positives to it. And I am not one of those people who thinks that, you know, yeah, we should just put it all down and go live in a cabin and that'll solve every problem. I don't think so, but I think it is about that balance and coming up with some actionable things you can do to get the best out of these devices. But then also, you know, when you need to switch it off or learn how to deal with it because it's something that's in our life. To me, it's kind of like information overload. Hey, this is great. We live in a time where we've got all this information. That is a huge benefit. We have easy access to it, but we're also just being bombarded with information. And so you have to have some sort of filter in there which is a whole different conversation. But I wanted to uh, talk about this real quick. I will put the links uh, down below. Uh, this is a great article. I fully appreciate the irony of this. I came across this on uh, Reddit. I love uh, scrolling through Reddit when I have some time. And I'm going to get into that too about how I limit that. But great article again. And some of this was really, I think, important here that you know the mere presence of your smartphone, even when it's turned off and face down, drains your attention. Totally true for me. I 100% agree with this, and I think most people would too, right? I've just picked it up and showed it to you. A lot of times, I'll have that there, and you know, it pops up. You see a notification. You can't help. It is designed to get your attention, right? Uh, what are some of the other ones here? Most Americans spend one hour per day just dealing with distractions and trying to get back on track. That's a huge amount of wasted time, right? Um, and then also uh, the, the context switching here, higher levels of switching between different media channels is linked to lower levels of both working memory and long-term memory. And uh, this author, he uh, links to this article in here. I will include this as well. If you want to <laughs> see some really scary stuff, come over here, check this out. I think it's really good to be aware of this stuff. Um, and also the studies um, or original sources are cited here. I think this is a fantastic resource. I have not looked through them all, went through a bunch of stuff uh, and, and find it really interesting. It just reminded me, hey, I need to get back on top of this stuff uh, in my own life and the things that I do. And so th I was writing the Productivity Academy newsletter and was thinking about this, about what I can and what I um, also do to help with this. Like I said, I like my phone. I use a computer. I'm online most of the time. But I also know when I need to focus, I need to set the environment. We already know this from different things, right? If you need quiet or you need isolation from sounds, you wear a headset or you go somewhere that's quiet. Uh, if you don't want to be disturbed, if you can do this, depending on where you work, if you work from home or in an office, you know, you shut the door, you go somewhere. Again, you set the environment. And a lot of times we're not setting the environment with our devices. So what I will do is if I need to write or do something else, a lot of times I will put my phone somewhere else or I'll go where it isn't. Um, and sometimes it's just nice, like I like to go somewhere else when I'm doing some writing. And that, again, is kind of like a mental switch. So I go and do that and will leave my phone if possible um, or just get rid of the phone and have it out of sight and out of reach. Right. Because occasionally you'll get the like, oh, man, I wonder if I got that email. I'll just reach over, even though it's face down. Uh, just like that study showed. So I think that having that uh, type of environmental setting is really, really important. Another one that I found less on the productivity side, but has really helped me on the mental side. I had a friend a while ago who mentioned this. This was a couple of years ago. And he said, yeah, me and my wife tried something a couple of years ago and, you know, we really stuck to it. Um, you know, we do not bring phones into the bedroom. And I was like, you know, that's a really good idea. You know, all jokes aside about what that the implications that might be, but the idea behind that being, you know, we want to 
not be distracted. You know, it's fine if you want to sit outside, uh, you know, in the living room in the evening and you want to check things out, you want to reply to people, you want to text, that's fine. But in the bedroom, maybe as you're preparing to go to bed, you want to talk uh, to your husband, your wife, your partner, whoever it is. Maybe, you know, if you're by yourself, you just let your brain do that thinking, let it be unfocused, right? And you can do things like keep a notepad on your nightstand, jot down any ideas and get to that the next day. A lot of times that that stuff just has passed and maybe it's not that important, but you can write stuff down so it's not in your brain. You're not trying to remember it. You know, hey, look up this or that later. Or what about this? You know, did I forget to do something? Write it down. Um, also, if you're a reader like myself, I found myself reading less because my phone was there. So I would maybe have the intention of like, well, I'm going to read some articles but I would find myself doing something else, might check email. And so just not having it there as an option, meaning I'd have to get out of bed and like go to the kitchen to check something on my phone. That meant I wouldn't do it, right? So that was another big help for me. And I really like that. And it has led to me reading more, which is nice. And then by the same token in the morning, when I wake up, my phone is not right next to me. So I don't immediately grab it because if it's there, that's normal, right? You've got this device that gives you information. Great, that's what your brain wants. It wants more information. So not having it there is great, makes it easier. I'm a runner, I get out earlier, I feel better. I don't, you know, oh, I'll just do this for five or 10 more minutes. Don't do that. I can get out though, go to the kitchen if I really need to check something or do some reading maybe on my Kindle, which is a device that I will keep next to the bed. So hopefully that gives you uh, some, some good ideas on how you can do this. Again, setting that environment is so important. We do it in so many other ways. And a lot of times we'll make that simple mistake of just having your phone nearby can actually be an issue. So productivity, uh, kind of in the productivity sense, getting rid of it in the you know times where you really want to be doing deep work. I understand that there's times where you'll want to have your phone with you on the same way. But if you're doing things where you need to focus, get it out of the room, get it away from you um, and go from there. And then like in the evenings, in the mornings, having that not there, if there's other activities you want to be doing can be so helpful. So if you want to read more, make sure your phone isn't nearby, another screen, things like that, that can really help you out. So if you have any other ideas on how to uh, do this or how you actually do it and the results you've seen, would love to hear it. So leave a comment and uh, hope that you have a great day and can implement some of this in your life. Uh, and I will just finish by saying it is a habit, right? It takes a while to build. I am not perfect about this and it's a really difficult one, right? I'm just ingrained by now to have a device with me. So I've got to remind myself, okay, hey, I'm going to, the, going to bed. I think I'm going to go read. Okay, I'm going to leave my phone in the kitchen. I need to actually do that. So, you know, it takes time to build that habit, uh, but uh, the results are great and really worthwhile.